Now we often learn that degrees of freedom equal n minus 1. And that's going to be true for a lot of the cases that we look at. And in fact, that's usually what you're just taught to memorize. Degrees of freedom equals n minus 1. And you'll see that in lots of the equations that we're going to have throughout this chapter on statistics. But there's going to be one or two times where you'll actually see that degrees of freedom will be n minus 2. Or you'll at least see the term n minus 2 showing up somewhere inside of an equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk through the conceptual idea behind degrees of freedom a little bit just to give us some sort of an idea of why that happens. And Now suppose I were to set up one of our most complicated possible sets of numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can all see right away what the average of that's going to be. The average is going to be right here at 3. That's going to be our mean. Now I want to point out that if each of these were individual measurements that we were doing in the laboratory, we went in, we were free by the universe to choose any value we wanted for these five. We just happened to pick what ended up being a very easy set to work with. Or, speaking chemically, our experiment gave us values that just happened to be really easy to solve. That's probably how we should be thinking of this, because we know that we're in an experimental science. It's not that we're usually choosing values, it's that the values are being uncovered or measured. So in this case, we've got our five values measured. They were all totally independent of each other. We can see right away we can go ahead and get our average. And, and in a surprise to absolutely no one, we can see that our average is 3. And if I calculate our standard deviation for that set of values, we find our standard deviation to be... Now if we go to our handy equations booklet, we'll see that standard deviation for a sample set, not for a population, s equals, and we have two different forms of the equation, either of which are effectively equivalent. All I've done is separate out x squared so you can figure out your average and work with it independently, or actually, sorry, for your individual values. And then over here you have the remaining term and you subtract the two. But notice at the bottom of this equation, n minus 1, n minus 1. That was our degrees of freedom. Now here's why. We were free to choose anything we wanted when we didn't really know anything. Each of these values, we knew nothing about. We went and we did a measurement. Any of those values could give us an average of 3. I could pick any other set of numbers I want, 5 values, to get an average of 3. But the thing is, once I do that, one of those values has to be fixed. So notice, if I went ahead and I just picked 2, 2, 4, and 4. I just chose those completely on my own, and I have to still get the same average because you know, the sample hasn't changed. I now have to choose the number 3 in order to get the same average value. And we can see, sure enough, that if I use the same equation, oops, helps if I actually lasso the right one. I'm just doing average of those five values. Sure enough, my average remains 3. But my standard deviation will not be. And if I lasso the standard deviation, you can see my standard deviation is now only 1, which makes some sense because what we've just done is around the same mean, we've tightened up the distribution of our normal curve. Everything is only off by plus or minus 1, and it turned out that once we plugged it all into our equation, standard deviation was 1. Now notice, now that I know an extra piece of information, my average, if I wanted to try to calculate my standard deviation, I was no longer free to choose all the same values. I lost a degree of freedom by knowing the average. And the average does go into my standard deviation, or at least it's describing my, my uh, average. Right, my standard deviation uses average and describes my average. Since I have to know the average I'm describing, I lost a degree of freedom. So you can see that you know the average, you lose a degree of freedom because you're describing the average. Now if I were using two different standard deviations in some other equation, and a good example of that might be something like the F-test, we're going to be comparing. So in an F-test, we would end up losing a grand total of two degrees of freedom versus the number of values that we actually have. So if I had 10 values total, I'd end up having a total of 8 degrees of freedom. Now, let's use that.
Now just to remind us, here's the equation for the F test. We calculate F by taking the square of standard deviation 1 and the square of standard deviation number 2. And we just want to make sure that it's a positive value, so we have that one in the numerator. So notice that in our F table, when we go to look it up, we are going to end up handling each of those two separately. We're going to lose one, standard, uh, one degree of freedom for one of our standard deviations. We're going to lose another degree of freedom for the other. So if I did a total of, let's just say, eight measurements for this standard deviation, and we'll say just for sake of argument that we did 10 for the other. If I had eight measurements, that means I'm using seven degrees of freedom for this value. And if I had 10 values, that means I had nine degrees of freedom for that one. So n minus 1, n minus 1. But in the whole thing, you can see I lost a total of two degrees of freedom. Now, in some other calculations, we'd actually have to do. Now, one example of that would be if we're calculating the standard deviation around the regression. And that's a, a more complicated standard deviation that we'll definitely get to uh, in a later video. And you can see in this case, we have n minus 2. That's going to be because we are going to know something about the scatter that's on the points, since we're doing it for our regression line, meaning we've got a standard deviation. And we've got the value of the slope itself. We know two pieces of information, and that means that we're going to lose two degrees of freedom. That's getting off into the weeds. Obviously, we're not going to think through that process for every one of these. What we're going to do is we're just going to look at the equation and see what we have in our uh, denominator, and we're going to go ahead and plug in the correct values. But sometimes people get a little confused why, if we're doing something like pooling standard deviations, we end up having to take the total number of measurements for all of these and subtract how many values we had, and how many means we had. And that's because we lost a degree of freedom for each of those means. This is just all that we have on the bottom of a pooled standard deviation, and we'll talk about now, that's definitely a strange kind of way to think of things for us, if it's a new way of thinking. Um, now, I just wanted to show another example. Now, suppose I know my average, and I have to get the same standard deviation. When I went and chose points, I was free to choose anything I wanted for these two points. But for these remaining two points, I was stuck. I could plug one number in and try another one, and that wasn't working out. I just could not find a value that would match up. Because when I go to choose this value, I was not free to choose this value, but I acted like I was free to choose here. If I really did have my degrees of freedom be five values minus two degree, one degree of freedom, that'd be four values I can freely choose. These three I started out with, that first value that I decided to try to pick, that broke everything. When I needed to actually match it so that I had the same average and same standard deviation, and actually this is the same standard deviation, I'm just showing more sig figs. In order to get there, I had to let a program built into Excel search for a value that would work for this one and for this one. In other words, I was free to choose these three values. I was not free to choose these two. These two had to arise as a consequence of knowing average and standard deviation getting these values. So if I went to use standard deviations in some equation, I would have lost two degrees of freedom. Now, just in case you're curious, I'll also show you how I did that. I went to the data tool on the data tab, and I went to solver. And if you don't have that installed, you may just have to do it as an add-in. Uh, but it's one of the standard add-ins that come with Excel. Uh, I can explain the process of adding that in for you, or you can Google it. You can see if you launch it, you can tell it, what objective do I want? Well. I want E8, standard deviation, to be at that value so that it matched my original set of values. In other words, by knowing my average and my standard deviation, I was going to lose the ability to choose those values. I had told it to leave these three values alone and iterate these two numbers until it could actually get both the average and standard deviation to stay the same. Notice that I locked in my average right here, E7 to be 3. So just like I, I claimed, I wanted you to see that it actually does work that way mathematically. If I had these three values chosen to be anything I wanted, I was no longer free to choose these two values. These two had to arise as a mathematical consequence 
of the fact that they're all going to be plugged into equations and still have to give me this value and that value all at the same time. So that was just a little bit of a tangent on what exactly is meant by degrees of freedom. Now that said, things get even more complicated when you do a true statistical analysis. This is very much a conceptual one. And if you use the ANOVA tool built into Excel, or if you were to go use an advanced, spread, uh, advanced uh, stats package like SPSS, degrees of freedom are so nuanced that it calculates them for you and reports them for you. And people sometimes don't understand why it would ever have to tell us degrees of freedom if it's just supposed to be n minus 1. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a background to understand conceptually what's going on. Each time that you know a piece of information that you aren't allowed to change, either because nature doesn't permit it or because you've constrained yourself mathematically, you're stuck picking values that'll work for as many times as you need. So just wanted to give you that as a quick uh, background.